today we will be learning about embryology yes so today's topic is about formation of the germ layers and we will be learning this in very much sections and the first one is cleavage so what do you mean by cleavage children yes we all know that we all develop from a single cell stage isn't it from that we move on to two cell stage then three cell stage then four cell stage so this process is called as the cleavage so we have two cleavage that is the early cleavage section and the late cleavage so you know that there is a two cell stage isn't it so before moving on to the process let's just see about the definition for cleavage it is the process of repeated mitotic divisions of zygote these are the zygote within the zona pellucida in a rapid succession you can see from two cell stage it went to three then it moved to four then five and such and the increase in number of the small cells okay so let's get started so uh, till this phase we can say that these fall under the early cleavage period now in late cleavage period comes the eight cell stage and this eight cell stage when it forms you can see there is an outer cell mass and there is an inner cell mass the outer cell mass see they are very tightly packed there is no any space even but inside they are loosely packed and this stage is called as the stage of compaction from here they move on to a 16 cell stage and that is called as the morula okay and this stage is called as the morula and you can see here too the outer cells are more thickly packed and the inner cell mass is loosely packed and in future this outer cell will form the trophoblast and the inner cell will form the embryo blast is it clear now let's see what happens to the morula yes now what happens is that the morula will become a 32 to 64 cell stage and then there happens fluid from the uterine cavity these fluid will enter into this morula and what does it do yes it separates the inner cell mass from that of the trophoblast okay now as the fluid increases from the uterine cavity the trophoblast will become more flattened okay and they get attached to the periphery they move to the periphery and this all the stages there is zona pellucida that is covering them okay and not only that after they move after they become flattened the inner cell mass also attaches to one end of the trophoblast and that end is called as the embryonic pole to where the inner cell mass get attached and the opposite side is called as the ab embryonic pole so this embryonic pole is having one more name that is the animal pole it is also called as animal pole now children what happens is that okay this cavity okay this cavity within is called as the blastocoel now the trophoblast where the inner cell mass get attached it divides actually and that divides and uh, okay the where it is contacted this point here the trophoblast cells they will divide and that cells are called as the polar trophoblast that area is called as the polar trophoblast and those rest where there is no attachment of the inner cell mass or the embryo blast and those uh, that those areas are called as the mural trophoblast so this stage of cleavage is called as the blastocyst is it clear now we need to know what happens to this blastocyst isn't it now approximately around fourth and the fifth day what happens of the fertilization fourth and the fifth day of fertilization by fourth day there will be thinning of the zona pellucida the outer layer thinning of the zona pellucida and by the fifth day it will get disappeared now actually you know what did this zona pellucida do it was actually preventing the attachment of this zygote to any other site of the 
fellow in either in the fallopian tube or in any other site of the uterus so as there is disappearance of the zona pellucida it will initiate the attachment of this trophoblastic cells to the correct site of the uterine epithelium and that stage is called as the implantation that is around by the 6th or the 7th day of fertilization so this we finish off with the cleavage topic